All right, welcome back. Final video of M14 Terror Review. We're doing green today, artifacts, and the couple lands. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a little more beefy video, but uh, yeah, not too much because there's not too much good. Mode. A little more beastie video. Uh -huh. oh. Oh. Well, first card is added because of the beast. The card that combos with the red card that says if you control this card, he doesn't have to attack every single time. Right. Uh, Advocate of the Beast is actually like a really sick card uh, in Limited. I'm like really happy about that card. He is uh, common. Uh, he's a 2-3 three for a 3, so he's even reasonable there. And then every end step, you get a, one of your beasts gets one bigger. Uh, mm -hmm. counter. And most of the good green creatures are beasts. Yes. So it's pretty sweet. Would have been cool if he was a beast himself, but that might have made him a rare, actually. Yeah, yeah probably. I mean, it's, you see that classic thing of, like, the elves, you know, taming the beasts. You know? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, Bramble Crush, we've seen before. It sees almost no play. Uh, it does, you know, some stuff. I did hear of a mono green control deck that played these. And it just, wow. And it, acidic slimes. Jeez. And it just blew, tried to, like, blow up everything. Just LDU'd yeah. all out of the game. Yeah. Mono green control. Thanks to the Brad Pack Alpha. I love this guy in Limited. Yeah, sick and Limited. Uh, anytime you have a Flash creature. Uh, yeah, awesome. like he's a combat trick that also kills you. Yeah, yeah, excellent, excellent card. Um, the fact that you can like, you know, two for one so easily with this guy, like you can pump himself so he can trade way up to like you know get e to four four, or you can pump one of your other guys and then mm -hmm. like spawn two guys. It's like he does a lot of work. Yeah, excellent card. Um, Brindlebore, uh, you know, he's fine. He's boring, but I do like him. Like yeah. just like you know, block and sack him. He's boring. That was pretty funny. You got me. Uh, Deadly Recluse, uh, excellent card for green. Obviously, one of the downsides of green is you know really have time with flyers. Boom, perfect solution for that. Bada bing, bada boom. Um, you know, death touch, so he just kills anything. Yep. Uh, you know, doesn't hit very hard, but what are you gonna do? Elf. Yeah, Elvish Mystic, real deal. Um, having 12 mana guys in standard, one drops. Yep, it's got good. He will be played for the next year, two years, oh, whatever. Yeah. In instantly. Um, yeah. And he's actually going to be like pretty value like money-wise because anytime there's been a Land of War Elf that's not Land of War Elf, they're worth a lot more. Right. Because there's so few of them. Like, Land of War has been printed like 1,000 times. So yeah. Plenty of Land of War Elf. It's cheap. But like, this guy's going to be a dollar probably because like Fine Horn Elves... Again, another Land of World variant. He's a dollar, you know. And yeah. Just a common elf, but like, just not a ton to go around. And you know, the decks that want those, the older formats. It's another elf for modern too. Yep. For like a potential elf deck. Yeah. I'm excited to try him there, you know, because that deck's it's not taken off, but if yep. it does, he'll be part of it. Next up, we have the creepy cat in the bathtub. Yeah, this is one of the probably. Uh, yeah, I think it's probably the weirdest artwork for the whole set. I agree. Okay, I don't really know what the heck's going on with this giant cat swimming down under the water. I have no idea. It's cool. It's unique. It's memorable. Mm -hmm. uh, and the card is decent. Uh, the card is really decent for, for green. Um, it's like a weird kind of pseudo board wipe. Pseudo board wipe that, like, because all your green guys are like, generally better than most creatures on the battlefield. So now, like, you, you know, you pump your 4 4 vanilla guy, you know, make him an 11. Not only do they have to block, they have to block anyways because they're gonna die, you know. Right, and you're gonna you're gonna kill, kill all your all your dudes. You know? I can see a situation where like you got like three three and they have like a one one and you just want to push push through like nine damage. Yep. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, fog. Let's look at fog. There really isn't much to say about fog. It's foggy. Yeah, it's been around. It does what it does. Yep. So another, uh, you know. Big discussion card is Garrick, Collar of Beasts. Yep. Um, right out of the bat, he's no Prime Speaker. Uh, not Prime Speaker. Uh, Primal Hunter. Primal Hunter. He is no Primal Hunter. Um, yeah, I. He's probably worse than Primal Hunter, but probably better than uh, the four mana Garrick. Either one. Either four mana Garrick. Either Relentless or Wild Speaker. Uh, I'm gonna have to disagree. I think both are better. Really? Do you think this is the worst Garrick? Yes. I don't know about that. Um, there's two things that are negatives with this Garrick. I do think this this Garrick is better than the new Chandra. Like, we're comparing Planeswalker and Planeswalker. Yeah. Um, but there's two things that are 
kind of detrimental to this guy. You have obviously have to play a very green centric deck because his neg three, which is his most powerful ability, uh, only works with green creatures. Um, obviously, the, the most insane one, the standard, is World Spire Worm. Um, obviously, that if that works, it's going to be crazy. Uh, I don't think it's going to. Um, but his plus one becomes only relevant if you're really creature heavy at the same time. So like something like Jun just doesn't even can't, just cannot play this guy because not, none of its abilities are relevant. Like you're so low creatures that you're you're gonna miss a lot of times. And then the Neg three only puts you know Thrag Tusk into play, nothing else. So it's I think that the Planeswalker is very good, honestly. Uh, and I think it will see play, and I think it will be gross in those decks. I just don't know what those decks look like. Okay, um, uh, he doesn't protect himself, not well anyway. Well, I'd say he, he doesn't protect himself, but he goes to five immediately, of which you drew, you know, probably on average two and a half cards. So like, boom, refuel next time. You know, like either if you don't if you don't have the five five damage kill that turn, I then play guys the next turn. Mm. So like it's un, it's similar in terms of saying your your argument is similar to the Ajani Call of the Pride where it doesn't do anything to protect itself, but this gives you that dig to get to the stuff to protect him. I know, but you want the planes are going to be like self functional. <laughs> like any of the other guards can just win the game by themselves. True. They're like single threats. They don't need anything else. Whereas this guy has to like. You have to manipulate your whole deck construction and build completely around him. Like you want to be creature heavy so that you don't whiff as bad on the plus one. Yeah. You want to be giant creature heavy so your minus three is more relevant. Yes. And I believe the minus seven is just yeah. Whenever you cast a creature spell, you surge and get another one. Right. So then you're casting. You want or lots of creatures for his ultimate to be relevant. So you're looking at a creature heavy deck that is predominantly green because your three only puts green creatures in, right. and the biggest creatures would, that would be, would be the most exciting to put in are usually green in the first place. Right. So you're playing like a very close to like a mono green strategy, or like maybe a Simic strategy, you know? I don't necessarily think that's, that's awful, though. Like, you know, yes, like mana guys aren't the best to draw off of him, but, like, you could ramp into this and Crater Hoof and, like, you know, just go crazy. I don't know. I've not seen it. All right. Well, to he, be seen. He's uh, definitely better than Chandra. And I definitely think he's like an okay guard. I'm not going to say he's bad. Because I don't think he's bad. But the decks that he would fit in or have to fit in or that he like constructs around him, I don't think are that great. Well, this, what about this scenario where like, okay, Primal Hunter is obviously a big problem for control decks. Like, mm -hmm. a, like you said, he's a, a huge threat by himself. He would, will win the game unchecked. Um, but the nice thing about Garrick is he can switch gears instead of just pumping out continuous beasts and just start drawing you three to five cards. Talking about five minute Garrick? Right. Yep. Which is also like awful for control decks. Like, cause you know, control decks win when they stabilize and they have, you know, to beat down the control deck, beat down the creature deck. Um, yeah, through card they, advantage they, usually. You know, through card advantage and sweepers and reduce their board to, you know, piddliness. Just right. nothing. Yep. We can just ignore it, and then they pass without playing anything. And then usually, you know, the control deck has that side side relief turn where they untap with no threats on the board. Yes. But this does a similar thing where, like, it just keeps the gas flowing. Like, sort of. The plus one is really crazy because, like, you're going to draw cards. Now you know I have cards to, to threaten you with. And uh, I'm building towards this ultimate, which means, like, Every time I play a guy, I get another guy. So now I don't ever have to overextend because I can just play my my, my uh, like Lanor Elf, get a Thrag Tusk for free. You're talking about the emblem. Yeah. Oh, the em you really can't like talk about emblems because like if with 99 percent of the planeswalkers, if their emblems pop, like the game is really bad. <laughs> like you're you're having it, you're fighting an extremely uphill battle. Except for Chandra Pile Master. Right. That's why I said 99 percent. She can be left out. Um. But like, yeah, yes, so this, this is, guy does have like. This is a pretty quick ultimate, though. He does have somewhat card advantage. He does like draw you some cards, but like the, the drawing five cards are like a huge, much bigger number with the five mana Garrick yeah. versus the mana Garrick draws you into like much crazier stuff. Like, you'll in to use like Jun specifically, 
you crack your Garrick, like, drawing five off of your Thrag Tusks, and one of those is going to be a Kessig Wolf run. You yeah, know? Yeah. A much more dangerous threat than any creature. Yeah, or Rack Return, or, like, maybe a Bonfire to, like, clear out that board of Junk Aristocrats yeah, tokens. Yeah. And, like, this Garrick is going to glaze over all those great cards. Like, you're not going to see any yeah, of those. It's, it's definitely, like, like we said, he's a creature planeswalker. Yeah, he there's not enough... rewards you for playing creatures. There's not enough utility in just creatures. You know what I'm saying? Well... Not right now, but I think there could be. And, there, and there's a lot of guys that I think will get really good, like after rotation, like Rorik's R seems pretty sick. You know, with off off Garrick. Um, what, what's what's interesting is uh, I do like him um, a little side by side with Domri. Okay. Because they're both like very very similar with like okay. very creature centric, but at the same point, then you're putting more non creature spells in your so you in maybe your creature just, deck. maybe just Garrick Domri is your only non land only non creature. Maybe, but the thing is, you need creatures that do stuff other than just you know beat face. Yeah, you, Some, you really like something like at... something like a more scavenging ooze type things, where it's like they have utility. Yeah, if there was attack. like a tongue tab, would be like that would be sick. Like obviously the dragon doesn't qualify because he's not green, uh, and he's hard to cast in this deck. If you're gonna play Garrick, you know triple red. Yeah, like, um, creatures like that, like Shriek Maw, you know stuff like that. Uh, if there was something like a Phantom to Shobo kind of like bomb, that would be sick. That would be that would be like nasty. Uh, things like this this character is as good as the creatures you have that you can play with yeah. him, you know. And uh, there just isn't any that like are like crazy ridiculous. Rule Spire Worm. The Hydra is like not bad. Oh, the Kalanda but you could just Hydra. you could just cast the Hydra. Like, yeah, yeah, he's not difficult to cast. Right. Anyway, know. let us know what you guys think. He's a question mark. Obviously, this is going to be a dividing creature. Um, dividing plays Walker. You know, we're going to have both two sides of this. The, the fact that we talk this much about it, though, is a good sign. Yeah. But, I mean, the, the, there's room for discussion, so that's good. We're a little like Chandra Ditch has, has no room. Followed up with uh, Garrick's Horde, which is just strictly worse. <laughs> His Horde is not as, uh, as exciting. I mean, it is a 7 7 trouble, trouble for 7, and uh, you can cast the top card of its creature card. Like, if it works really well with Garrick. Yeah, you know if you're going to hit or not, basically. Yeah. I don't know. He's seven mana. He does everything. The, this card's been around before. It wasn't that great before. Yeah, it so. didn't do anything before. Giant Growth, awesome. Uh, it's currently in standard with Justin Ravnica. Like, yeah, so like it's not... This is more for like the limited format than anything else. Yeah, and, it, and it's excellent in the screen deck. Like Exactly yep. what you want to do. Uh, Giant Spider, again, another uh, Flying Hoser. Really valuable for that for this deck. It's a really big spider. I would be scared crapless if I saw that thing. Yeah, giant spider. Uh, obviously, one of the most printed cards ever. I believe it's only been not been in like one core set, yeah. which is the last one. Yep. Uh, next, Glade Cover Scout. Yep. You're unhappy about this card. I just don't know what Wizards is doing. Like we, as a community, have actively said we don't like hexproof. Like I, I have to say, the, the vast majority. And now, ban hexproof is a deck, and it's probably one of the best decks in the format. But people hate playing it. It sucks. It's so yeah. boring. People hate playing against it because they feel so like robbed of their matches. And the people who play it hate playing because they feel like they're yeah, robbing like, people of their deck matches. Is this support? So you're gonna give them this like you're gonna give that deck much better tools. Now this has like a, a, another cheap early guy uh, to go along with you know the other excellent creatures it already has. It just is like totally unintuitive that you give more support to a deck that the community actively dislikes. To force it to be a tier one deck, now we have to deal with this for like the rest of standard as the the deck to beat now. You really think this guy will slide into that deck that plays? Hundred percent, like no doubt. It's like perfect for that deck because now you don't because like the ideal draw for that deck before was Absence Pilgrim, and because you want to go like Absence Pilgrim into the Geist is obviously your, right. your your best draw, but like now you don't necessarily even have to play Absence Pilgrim because now you have like the hexproof guy you can just get in all in on right away and like you know suit him off flight him you know give him a rancor boom yeah. you're winning like, right I don't know like, I think he takes over for either absence pilgrim or voice uh, main deck interesting and then the, the other guy the witch main guy is uh, cyborg mm-hmm. uh, so uh, I, I, I'm not happy about it I do think bar and blood's value goes up more um, far and away. Yeah, all, all the sack elves become better. Um, far and blood, I think, is the best one just because 
Hexproof's best line of defense against that is playing a lot of creatures. And Voice solves that problem because it's two creatures in one. So just having Liliana tick, tick down usually isn't enough. You usually have to go like Liliana into Liliana, you know, into like Pillar, another guy, so you can sack out it is worthwhile. But Bottom Blood, it's two automatically, so you'll get, you'll at least get, you know. One other, one other guy. But that's my rant on the stupid text proof. Yep. Uh, ground Shaker Sliver. Too expensive. Too expensive, not good enough for the Sliver deck. If you gave, like, maybe pluses as well, maybe. Yeah. I just don't want to be playing 7 mana for my Sliver Threats. Owl of the Night Pack, uh, which means cover 4, it didn't do much. So, like, you would have 7 forests, and you would get, like... 14 power. 14 power. A little, a little not that exciting, like, I expected more. Yeah, I mean, it's... it's you have to play all forests at that point, too. Which is, You're right, yeah. Which is tough. And they're just 2-2 two, two Reed Wolves, it's not like they're that threatening. Not good. Uh, hunt of the week. No, hunt the week. Hunt the week. Um, Another fight card. Yeah, solid card for green. It's, uh, not, it's not as gross as some of the other fight cards. Like I don't know why it's a sorcery. Yeah, or four mana. Sorcery makes it much worse. Um, I mean, the, the getting your guy bigger is, is relevant for the fighting mechanic. Yeah, I mean, it's limited removal for green. <laughs> yeah, basically. Into the wilds. New Oracle of Maldaya, but not, not a Maldaya. creature, so not as good. Um, I, I it could be good enough though. If like if like true ramp becomes an archetype, which we have to get another ramp growth um, out of Theros, well, at least one, right? Because Farseek's going out and getting in the cut. Yep. Um, this could be a card, but I don't know. It might be. It might just like miss the cross section. Of like getting a new card from Theros and then this and then Ramp of Growth. I mean, uh, Farsi. Yeah, but doesn't Rokola Dial play you let you play an additional land? Uh, yes, it does. And this does not. Oh, this just lets you play land on the top. Yeah, that's much worse. That's a Yeah, it's much worse. <sighs> well, let's just move on to the good card. Yeah. So, the other most, this is the second most, well, let's see. Most expensive card in the set right now, uh, tied. With Archangel of Thune in terms of pre order price. Yep. Colonial Hydra. And uh, I already went over how this art card interacts very favorably with Exava. Right. And you play Exava on four, then this on five, and comes in comes in for eight I'm with a double screaming. strike. Uh, eight with trample, and all your dudes with Unleash, which you probably have lots of because you're playing something like Exava, all get their an additional plus one plus one counter. Yep. And, and like they get doubles. Like if you somehow get two attacks, like they can go from two to four. Like, your calculators are going to get huge. Or like, your excitement is going to get enormous. And this thing has trample. Yeah, this is this is one of the first Hydras where, like, you're like, whoa, this is a standard playable Hydra. Yeah, this most actually of, might happen. Most of the other Hydras are always like, oh, wow, it's so cool. It's, like, so, it's going to be big and da 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 And then it just dies and it's awful. Yeah, it, it, it's funny because, like, the first Hydra that, like, has had X in it. <laughs> right, yeah. And it's, like, immediately right. playable. Yeah. Like, we don't care. Uh... It does die to all the removal. That's like the one one like thing I would say knocks it down. Yeah, they, they almost have to make it like that because if it just didn't, it would just be too good. Yeah, I mean, it, it closes the game like ultra fast, like really quickly. Who knows? Maybe next set we'll have it with a hexproof. Oh god. <laughs> so yeah, the hydras are uh, hydras a real deal. Uh, yeah, this card's good. Real really good. Gets, like, it gets out of control. Like you can you know ramp it with some mana guys. You can just play it on curve. It's really good. You know, win the game quickly by itself. Obviously, better with friends. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely a creature to be aware of. Standard playable. Uh, Colonian Tusker. Tusker. Yep. So this is the uh, two mana three three. So We're slowly upgrading to bears. Green loves this. Our bears are slowly turning into three threes. Yeah. It's just the what's going to happen. So it's it's very good. Uh, very aggressively costed. You know, perfect for the green deck. It's a lot of uh, a lot of power for its mana cost. Do you remember Leatherback Bailoff? Yeah, three mana, four, four, five. Yeah, it's awesome. He didn't see nearly as plays I wanted him to. I thought he was great. Well, I mean, Trim Green is kind of yeah. you know, restricted. Hey. Oh. oh man, I played my share up of Final Worlds. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, excellent card, especially on two. He's a beast. Like literally, he's a beast. Um, <laughs> he uh, obviously combos nicely with the Advocate of the Beast, who previewed first in Green. Um, so yeah, this is like. 
perfect for that deck. Like, you can get his uncommon, so it's not going to come up too often. But if you can, like, go, like, Tusker into the Advent of the Beast, that turn, your the Tusker becomes a four. You know, that's, like, a lot of damage. Yep. So, pretty good. Uh, next up, Lay of the Land. Uh, this is not a ramp spell. Nope. Not at all. It's just a mana fixing spell. Um, and it's okay. It's, it's going to see some play if, like, you're in this limited format, if you're like really, you know, getting like a trying to like flash a bomb, and you really need that mana fixing. Because uh, the mana fixing is like not good in the set. Like you have just this and uh, Shimmering Grotto. Yes. For yeah, like true, for... true mana fixing. Yeah. Uh, oh, gem the not gem high slimmer, but the gem high slimmer like variant. Yeah, mana weft. That's yeah. Also, um, uh, the artwork is like really cool, but like I don't understand like what's going on in it, and like it doesn't. Um, like what I think of searching for basic land, I'm not thinking of like crazy yellow rings around all the, on around Spires, everything. Fires, yeah. Yeah, I feel like the land's getting sucked to like Mishra's Helixy kind of. I don't know. Oh, well, yeah, not a great card. I uh, won't see playing standard because it's far in far insignificant worse than far All right, here's the uh, mana whiff sliver. The other, uh, the other uh, mana pee, fixing peeing in the woods sliver. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's what he looks like he's doing. <laughs> it's weird that he's looking away from us. I know, it's really, like, anticlimactic. It's like... It almost feels like we're, like, spying on him. Yeah, well, he's majestic. He's interesting. Yeah. But he walks on two legs. Yeah. Slivers look nothing like slivers. One of the best, one of the best slivers, uh, it makes that deck function. Uh, it allows you to access all your five colors. Uh, for your, you know, commander sliver deck, uh, you've got, you know, another excellent... Yes. Card. This this is actually a good, and I would actually play it in my slower deck. Yeah. So, next up, we go from that end to the other end. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, six mana sliver. I do think you could have him as a one or two of. As like, just that, like, sure. Kind of like the, um... You just drop him and you win. The collective blessing sliver? Right. Yeah, he's like the collective blessing, so it like, just gets this crazy... He is, crazy he is easier to cast and attacks. So, I would say that's a card. Obviously, he's good in uh, limited quite a bit because he's a, he's a six six for six by himself, and that's that's good enough. No, he's a three three. Oh, yeah, that's right. He is a so, six six. Yep. Yeah. yep. Naturalized. Does it does perfect. Clean. Yep. Very good uh, sideboard card. Sideboard card. Uh, especially good in this format because all the all the enchantments I can see it coming in quite. Yes, easy. yes, yes. Uh, Oath of the Ancient Wood as an enchantment, not not very good. I don't like this one at all. Can't reach beyond. Yeah. Kind of boring. Yeah. Plummet. Start target creature flying. I mean, I've liked Plummet. Like, there's been times in Standard or whatever when Plummet's it's like, good, yeah. when Plummet's fine. Yep. But you have to be like a predominantly green deck that is like lacking proper removal in other colors to want to be a Plummet. AKA not be playing black. Right. Next up, we have Predatory Sliver. This one's a good one. One of the best, I'd say. Like right at the top of the line. Yes. Um, I agree. This guy's you know, he's a grizzly bear that gets out of control for each other one you have. Um, you know, makes that whole first strike flying, like all that stuff much, much better. better. Yep. Um, I mean it, it's a lord, and lords are always like good, so Yep. There's yeah. really no no more questions about it. Primeval bounty. Well let you take this one. Because I'm not the green aficionado that you are. Yeah, this card I think is is amazing in commander. I think it's like an automatic inclusion in any any green base commander deck. Um, and I, I think it's like close to being playable in constructed, just because it does a lot of stuff. Like generally cards that do a ton of things are good. Like look how good Deathrite Shaman is because he does three awesome things. Uh, I mean this is a weird comparison compared to Deathrite Shaman, but it's a enchantment that gets you. Different things at different times. Uh, it's just pure value every time. You don't actually have to do anything to make it turn on, besides you playing your normal spells and creatures and lands. Uh, there's no like additional cost to make them work. Uh, I just I don't know what the deck would look like, but it, if if it works, it would be a sweet card. I mean, the fact that you get guys, get counters, and get life, you know, potentially all in one turn, just by playing a normal turn of playing a guy and a land. It's like it's a pretty big game. Like three life a guy and a counter. Yeah, uh, well, it's three counters. 
yeah. on one guy, right? Yes. Yeah. So, like, you know, you play a far snake or something, you know, make your guy bigger. You know, you play a, a mana guy, you get a 3-3, three, three, play a land, you know. It, it is really, really big value. The only concern that I have is it's just another one of those, like, do-nothing enchantments until you do something else. It is. It is. I almost... It's like... I feel like if five-color control was a thing, again, like, this could be... It's like weird, mm. like pseudo win condition where you don't actually have to play anything. How about I play the three seven Sphinx? You could do that too. and slowly <laughs> like poke you to death. You could also do that. So I, I think this is you know immediately going to be a commander format card where the, the format's slower. You know, like you just gonna get a ton of value out of it over time. Yeah. Um, I would like it to be standard playable because it's, it's I think it's an interesting card and it would it would make an interesting new deck. I think. Um, I don't think it's fast enough or powerful enough right now. Uh, yeah. I agree. Range Guile. Um, you know, I like, I like this combat trick a lot, actually. Uh, it's, you know, counter spell for one green sometimes. You know, it's, uh, you know, trade up sometimes. Yep. Next, get some uh, Root Wallas. This is what they do when they're not basking. Uh, I'm a fan of Root Walla. It's always been a solid green creature. Uh, you know, attacking for is sometimes decent. Reminds me a lot of uh, the current, I guess, Beautiful Mage or the uh, the blue one, the mono blue one. Yeah, yeah. Like that. But, I mean, that, that's an effect that's always been around. Right. Uh, next up, we have Rumbling Veloth. I like the picture. Yeah, it's good. I think it's the same arc, the other one that you'd like, actually. The other beast. The, the red beast. Probably. Uh, solid. So, 4 4 for 4. You know, really good. Combos nicely with Advocate of the Beast. Uh, he's at Common, so it's very easy to pick up multiple of these. And that's a lot of uh, a lot of beef. It's like a, there's like a built-in green stompy deck to the format. Yeah. So, uh, solid. Vanilla, but solid. Next up, Savage Summoning. This is the replacement to Cavernous Souls, since we're losing Cavernous Souls. Much worse. Way worse. Like, Way adding, worse. adding mana to something is like You're adding defeating the mana. purpose. You're adding specifically a green mana. And yeah. every deck doesn't necessarily have green. That's the ones that had cavern. And then, like, you actually have to add like add these cards to your deck, so it's taking up slots. Whereas cavern was automatically a land, so it was never dead. Like sometimes it, you know screwed up your mana colors. But yep. I just don't. I just don't see this card being like good enough. Like if they print like a really sick counter spell, like mana leak again. Or you know, remand or like or like a really good counter spell. Like maybe I could see this. Yeah, I mean, it does give your creatures flash. It does. Which is like really good, but I don't know. Like, I, like like you said, I'd rather have just like more creatures in my deck. It's essentially the same as if I have two creatures and I play one creature and it gets countered, and then I play the second copy of that creature and it resolves. It's the same as playing a savage summoning and having the first one. Right, it's but two like, cards for one, and technically you could play that flash, and it gets one counter bigger. But there's scenarios where you're going to be like stuck with two savage summonings in your hand and, and no creatures. Yeah, it's like that's totally worse than having just multiple copies of more creatures. Yeah, or if you even had like two of the same like creature, that some, there's lots of situations where it's beneficial because you're, you're putting the green creatures into play, and green creatures aren't exactly the most resilient things. Yeah, so like you just kill it, and then like oh, I've got another one. You know, it's yeah. like you you have more resiliency. It doesn't always have to be green too. Like this this card can cast any creature. You oh yeah, to, yeah, yeah. You have to have green in your deck because right. Savage Summoning is green. That's that's just true. Whatever. Like I I don't think it's good. It's definitely not playable in uh, limited at all. It's another it's it's, it's yeah, another rare which of which we've seen multiple in this set which are going to be last pick. That's true. Um, and like this isn't going to see any play at all like in current stages because we have Cavern. Like right. there's no point. Next up, though, probably my favorite card in the set. Uh, reprint. I love me some Grizzly Bears. Some especially value ones. It's going to be awesome in Modern, but we actually not even need it in Modern. Like, we have Deadrite Shaman. That does all of our graveyard manipulation. We games. do, but it does give um, decks that want that, like, a, another, like, really good uh, card. Yeah, it gives another one. It also, like, gives decks that don't want to, like, splash the black in for Deathrite Shaman. Who are, like, already just playing it just for the, the like, eating creatures aspect. Yeah, in the land world. Now they have something that actually like, can kill you much, much faster. Right. Um, I absolutely love the interaction between Scavenger Goose and Archangel of Thune. I think that's disgusting. 
we can just like make all your guys huge really fast. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's a if you've never played with scavenger views because you didn't have them from the commander product, you didn't play Legacy, um, and you know play with these. Uh, the card's really good. It's like you look at it quickly and you're like, oh, it's a two two or two and it exiles stuff. Like yeah, I have Death Rite Shaman, but life gain and the fact that this gets bigger is what makes it really really good. Yep. Um, I think it's an automatic inclusion in Jund off over Ground Seal now. Uh, it gives you another guy early to play, uh, which interacts early with against the aggressive decks, which is really excellent because like Ground Seal is the worst card in your deck against like Blitz or Scab News is it's awesome. Really, like really good. Awesome because like early game, I'm fine with like trading this off for like one of their two twos, like whatever. I'm gonna buy an extra turn. Then late game, I can just like go nuts because like in Jund, obviously I killed like a ton of their guys, so I can just like eat like you know three guys. I have five five now, and right. they can't attack. Right. Yeah. So this card's this card's gonna uh, be really good in standard. It's a real deal. Uh, Spore Mound. You uh, liked this card. I actually do like this card. I think this is you know it's a limited card, but I think I love it's good cards value. that have Something just like inherent value that you don't have to do anything. You don't have to waste time. Skewing your deck in weird ways, like your deck obviously has lands. Every magic deck has lands. You play lands, you get a free one one. I'm down with that. Like yeah, like one ones are awesome and limited. Like they chump block, they buy you time. Yep, and I mean they even help you race sometimes too. Like sounds sounds good. Troll hide, I I'm, it's okay. I'm not, yeah, I mean, I'd much rather play some of the other enchantments that are like right, more right. But this one definitely is not that bad. No, it's not awful. But there's not much to say about it. Uh, the other Hydra in the set, Vastwood Hydra, uh, significantly you worse. You say it's vastly worse? Yes. Okay. I would say it's vastly worse. Okay. Um, but it's funny because it, it has X in the, in the casting cost. Um, yeah. Like, this is just much worse, much worse Hydra. Um, I do think it's cool that Green has modular now, though. I think that's pretty cool. This, this one guy. This one, yeah, yeah. yeah. Has modular like it's just so much more like for the same minute cost as the other Hydra like you're getting a three like a three 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 that when it dies you can just like, distribute your counters I'd rather like get a four four get a four four that turns into an eight eight trample the next turn and then <laughs> bigger again and then does it double or just add four doubles so that gives a sixteen sixteen <laughs> trample yeah that's why that card is thirty dollars it's like that's gross so Hydra uh, dude what if you just made like Yeah, four colors. Like, what if there's like an Aurelia in there? <laughs> <laughs> what if you just had an Aurelia okay. in the process? You get free beat now. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, Aurelia might be good enough to like just go Naya colors and like don't worry about the Exava thing. Two combat steps after you, you know, like play play Hydra on five, Aurelia on six. Two combat steps. Yeah, like, eight, you're, you're eight, dead. An eight eight tremble and then a sixteen sixteen tremble. And Aurelia hits you for. Each yeah. Um, well, both of those are like approachable. Uh, Verdant Haven. Next up, we just saw it uh, recently. Mm -hmm. uh, it is mana fixing. Uh, it's made its way to the corset. It's to life. See how long it sticks around in yeah. the corset. It's fine. No, nothing uh, too exciting. Yep. Next up, uh, Voracious Worm. It does combo though with Voracious Worm. Oh. Um, this worm is literally just a bear unless you gain some life. And that's like very little, like to never going to happen. Limited. Um, you can make like some weird situations in the constructed format where you gain life, but that's just a vanilla creature, which is like, okay, if you get like really big, that's okay, but it's not exciting. And like, you, know, you can make like one thing that's really cool is uh, you can make like infinite life or something, and then like break the cycle. And you're like, oh, I stopped like a million, and then you get, like a plus million plus one counters. On like a voracious worm, that they just like doom blade. <laughs> okay. It's right. like, oh, that's really big. Oh, yeah. Uh, jump off with my one one. <laughs> jump. It's like so good. Uh, so yeah, voracious worm. You know, ninety nine percent of the time, it's gonna be a bear, and that's fine. And you'll play it, and you'll be happy about it. Um, but there'll be a few scenarios because there is some life gain around where oh, sometimes he's a four four. Yeah, but that's just like so boring. You know? <laughs> but yeah. Maybe I have a scavenger news and I gained some life that turn. Yeah, you, you do what you gotta do. So I, I think you, you play them and you're fine, but you're not like windmill slamming. Right. Uh, windstorm. I don't know, windmill slam. 
Yep. Um, it's just not really a card right now. Like flying in constructed isn't huge right now. Uh, definitely a good sideboard card for the green deck against like the blue white flyers deck, which looks more like the strongest. Yes, archetype. that's like the most uh, beneficial aspect of this card. Like that one like niche use. Yep. All the creatures with flying that matter in standard are like Restoration Angel and Thunder Mile Kite, and then we're talking like six cost for a windstorm. Yeah, like, yeah, it's it's... Not like you might as well play plummets at that point. Yeah, plummets are far superior. Um, so Windstorm is an absolute blow against that, like, the Blue White Flyers deck, though. Because it, it's in speed, too, so you can get him, like, in combat. Yep. Uh, here's the other Hexproof guy that I was complaining about. Um, I don't think he's good enough to take over a main deck slot, but I can see him as a, uh, you know, sideboard slot as a, a couple. Yeah, which Stalker, the last in the, in the hate cycle. Um... This artwork to me is l- laughable. It's hilarious. Like, why is his head so big? Yeah, he's like he's very goofy looking. He looks nothing like a wolf. No, he's not. He, he's a wolf creature type, but he's not. He's got like kind of spikes. He's like really stubby little legs. He's like yeah, a yeah. pug. Weird. I mean, there is a mythological creature in I can't remember where it's from, like in the world that this creature is what they're referencing. This like weird wolf thing with the big head. Um, but he's just funny on that the magic card. Um. Again, you know, Hexproof stinks. Stop printing it. And uh, this Hoser is probably one of the worst. Because, like, all the other ones, like, actively do something. Like, I'm interacting. I'm taking a card from your hand. Um, you're getting hit for two. Right. You know, like, they're all, like, really good. But this one, like, oh, this creature that you already can't target just gets one bigger. It's like, all right, that's kind of not as exciting. Yeah, I mean, it is fine, I guess, with the enchantments. But, um... One of the best ways to get hexproof creatures is black cards, and they just like kill it. Like it, it doesn't get, give a crap. Like that gets plus one plus one. Yeah, hey, if you play Witch Doctor and then I untap play Liliana, it's like oh, let me get a counter. I'm like okay, here you get a counter. That's, all right, cool. And then uh, sacrifice creature. Okay. It's like, yeah, it's oh, like it's a good value. Thanks. It it is like really like counterintuitive. Yeah. So last green card, last uh, colored card altogether. Uh, Woodborn Behemoth. If the ramp strategy becomes a, a deck. This guy could be a part. Yeah, I like this guy a lot and just limited in general. Because, like, it, very often you get lots of lands to the point where you could turn this guy on it. And then he goes from, like, an already, already 4 4, which is, like, not bad. Yeah, 4 4 5 is playable. To, to an 8 8 trample. Like, yeah, all of a sudden, like, you play that, like, 8th land. Like, your, your opponent's like, oh man, don't top that land. Don't top that the land. You're like, bah, 8th land. The swing out. <laughs> so, yeah, he's pretty sweet and limited. Uh, if a crazy, like, ramp land deck becomes possible, then. Maybe he's in constructed, but... Is in? Uh, no. Yeah. Alright, so we're going to jump over to artifacts. Um, first up is uh, a quarter's shield. Uh, uh, I forgot to sing. Let's go. <laughs> uh, the only time I ever saw this card played was in, like, Pure uh, Steel Paladin decks. Yep. Just and the only reason it's soft play was because it was a zero artifact. Yeah, that, that's the only reason why. So it's, like, zero draw card. Right. So... Yeah, I, I don't suggest playing this card. Like, try out to pick it unlimited if you can help it. Yeah. I mean, you get it like really late. Fine, maybe it's decent. The still the symbol like very ore zombie. It is, and that's bizarre as we've seen in the set before that. Yeah. Um, next up, the third combo piece of Bobo the Bobo Toy of the Drumbo. Yeah, the third combo piece of the uh, Bog Brew Witch. <laughs> you need three pieces to make this piece of crap work. But check out the value, man. You gain four life, and then if you sack the newts, each opponent loses four life, and you gain four life. And because of the newt trigger, you get to kill one of their other guys. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's, that's value. Oh, that's definitely an engine. How do you, don't you, isn't there a way to get the newt back, too? Uh, not. Or like the witch searches for newts or something? The witch searches for newts. Oh, okay. But yes, they're... There's other ways to get the newts back. But all I think of, all I can think of is Alien. The little girl named Newt. Oh, yeah. Why are we sacrificing her? She's nice. I don't know. Right. So, yeah, that the, the whole cycle is not really that good, but I, yeah. I think it's funny. Next up, we have Darksteel Forge. This is pretty much a commander reprint. It is a commander reprint. It's like, hey, this card's pretty expensive, and everybody loves it, so here you go. It's funny to see like these mirrored in cards, and of course, it's it is, like they just like don't really fit. It, it sticks out pretty bad for the sort thumb. Yep. Um, it's not playable anywhere, anytime, ever, besides Commander. Well, they, they put the flavor text as Elish Noon. 
Oh, did they? They changed it. Huh. So yeah, like nine mana, obviously crazy. Um, you know, it's just artifact to control, which you know, there's no artifact deck in standard. Right. And or, or modern. If there was, they probably wouldn't want a nine mana to make everything indestructible. Correct. Next, Next up, more Mirrodin. Uh, more Mirrodin. Uh, I do like this one a little bit more, just because it's like a mana rock. Um, and a lot of people do want this for Commander. It's very popular in Commander. It is, yeah. It's a permanent chip, just Commander Rock. I mean, you could play, uh... The new one that makes all your lands. Yeah, that one. Everything. Yeah. Whatever that one is called. Whatever that one is called. <laughs> uh, next up, Door Destiny. Possible inclusion in Slivers. Possible inclusion in the Slivers. I like what we've been building, like, a Sliver deck over this week. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, this is a reprint, right? Yes. Yeah, it's a cool. You name a creature type, and then uh, when you play a creature, it gets a counter, and then you get all your creatures get plus one plus one on the number of counters you have. As potential, it's a little slow though. Uh, like if this was cheaper, it would be like actually like really good. Yeah, this saw play in standard for like a small time. Um, once like the that standard format like kind of fleshed out, it did fell off. But yeah. early on in that format, it did see uh, some. It's fine. This is like um, the new Coat of Arms. Yeah, it is the new Coat of Arms. Yeah. Coat of Arms is so much better. But Coat of Arms uh, affects everybody. Right, but that's or, fine. Or Door doesn't. Because well, like, you're probably playing... You're a sliver marrow, you don't want that. Yeah, well, that's why I board it up. Um, so Elixir of Mortality, you know, been in Corset, and still in Corset. It's fine. Uh, yeah, pretty unexciting. Uh, Fire Shrieker. I like this a lot in Limited. Giving creatures double strike is... Bananas. Yeah, better in some of the limited decks than others. Like, obviously, like, pretty gross in green, pretty gross with trample. Yep. Um, you know, not as good in the Flyers deck because you're, like, you know, you're getting 2-2 two -two with Double Strike. It's not irrelevant. You, you'll do it. But it's not, like, it's not as gross as suiting up your 4-4 four -four or, you know, your 5-5 five -five or whatever. Yep. Um, plays nicely with a lot of the Power boosting enchantments. It's true. So that's something to be aware of. Mm -hmm. uh, next up is Guardian of the Ages. I, I just don't know what's going on with this card. Uh, I mean, it's, it's really flavorful. I mean, does it lose Defender and Gain Trimble like forever? I guess. Otherwise, that doesn't make sense. I, like, to me, I just. Why didn't you just make it a 7 7? Already. What is a 7 7? What are you talking about? Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean like, just a 7 7 creature. Like, why does it have to have the Defender? And then have to lose defender, then gain trample. Like I spend a seven seven trample. I think it's just having it's just they're just trying to make flavor. <laughs> like how statue turns into like a, a not statue, like Meh. Yeah, meh. I'm with you. I mean seven mana, like seven mana that's kinda of a lot. It's kinda of a lot. And yeah. Especially in constructed, even even limited, I'm like a little wary to play it. Yep. Uh, next up we have haunted plate mail. Uh, this guy's pretty interesting. Yeah, much much better. Uh, in terms of like similar kind of uses as the guardian, because uh, it can play you know defense and offense. Yeah, this feels a this lot feels like uh, this feels a lot like Gideon. Uh, well, I mean, obviously not as good as Gideon. No, obviously, <laughs> I said it feels like Gideon. It is. It, it isn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, this is this is like this weird uh, permanent that sits on the board. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it starts hitting you. It starts like killing you. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, that was fine, but like I mean, Gideon did more things, obviously. Right. Um. Yeah. I mean. How highly would you pick this in a draft? Um, pretty high. Pretty high. Um, because it's really hard to, to kill. Because yes. it only turns on when you want it. Uh, it can block. Because you can just turn a creature on their turn. Block. Um, you know, there's there's scenarios where, bam, you'll just equip it to your flyer and get in there for four extra damage. Yeah, I mean, the equip isn't terrible. It's only four to equip and plus four plus four is a lot. So, like, I, I, do, I do like this card. And I, I think, like, if there's, like, a creatureless control deck, like, there could be, like, a win condition with, like, yeah, maybe. you know, key runes and plate mail or something. Uh, maybe, but if, like, key runes I could maybe get behind, but I like Muta Vaults, too. Muta Vaults is what we But we'll get there. Yeah. Uh, Millstone, in case you want to build your mill deck in limited, uh, you go to town. Yeah, I mean, if your deck's, like, slow enough with, like, tons of removal, it's possible. 
Um, this could be like a potential Nefaya Dreadnought replacement, but having to like invest mana is a lot worse than just playing a land. Yeah, and Drown Yard, while more expensive to activate, does mill an extra card. Yes, which is like actually matters quite a bit. Yeah. Next up, we have Pyrex's Gauntlet. Awesome. This card stinks. You're playing five mana for an enchantment that lets your reds instant sorceries do two more damage. Yep. Very bad. It does work on Planeswalker too, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you you finally make Charter's ability better. Woo! With a, another five mana artifact. Yeah. Yeah, like I feel like effects like uh, Pyromancer's Swap, like from uh, Future Sight, I think. Yes. Were just like way better because I just did like a way more damage, um, and it was cheaper. You know, like I don't know. Okay, I had the, Swap had the downside of like you had to discard your hand, but usually you just killed them that turn because you like yeah. combo off. Right. Uh, so yeah, Pyromancer's gone. It's like almost unplayable. Like it's a, yeah. it's a wasted rare. It's yeah. a totally wasted rare. Awful. Uh, Ratchet Bomb is is good. It's not amazing. It's not broken. Uh, it's just efficient at what it does. Um, yeah, it's all, I mean, that's like the most efficient, but depending on what you're trying to do. It's... Efficient being in that it costs two colorless. It can go in any deck, and it will it will kill any permanent. Like the efficiency in terms of investing time is not there. Yes, but it might be good against livers if livers become a thing. Because like you just like uh, blow up whatever one you like. It's good against any small creature deck. Like it's, it's awesome yeah. against like Blitz. You know, it's awesome against. Uh, you don't think it's too slow against Blitz? I don't think so. Because like you back it up with some one for one, and all you gotta do is get it on two. Yeah, and just like let it sit until you like. There's a situation two. where like they top deck a boar or something, and they have like a mare. It's like, Bleh. Mm-hmm. yeah. I look forward to playing with Rachel again. I miss my Sun Titans though. Yeah, really. Except Ring of Three Wishes, EDH card. Pretty much strictly EDH card. Like the format would have to slow down to an absolute crawl to make this card playable and constructed. Uh, what about limited? Uh, if we're on that like bomb centric deck, we get like a bunch of dragons and angels and stuff. Like maybe. Like it's kind of the same argument. It's with, pretty expensive. With Diabolic Tutor. Like this one, you 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 actually have to waste. Uh, it's like like two turns go by two turns after you just to get your card. Then the third turn, you play the bomb. Right, and then still can't, and then probably can't use the wish after either. Right. Yeah, it's, it's still tough. It's, it's crazy it's, slow. It's crazy slow, but it's like it's disgusting in Commander. I mean, it's it's literally three, you know, three tutors in one card. Uh, yeah. Which that's is what true. you want in that format. That's true. Anyway, Rod of Ruin card is awful. Reprint. This is totally awful reprint. Uh, Rod has gotten so bad over time. Like the card was actually decent before. Yeah, it's aged very poorly. Yeah, I mean, essentially you need seven mana to do one damage the first turn, or you invest four, and then next turn you invest three to do one damage. Like, just so slow. There are things that do the same amount of damage for, like, no cost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sliver Construct, not good. Three mana, two, two, not good enough. Nope. Uh, Just play real slivers, and you'll be much better. Yeah, I agree. Um, The, like, the hive stirring is better than that stirring. Yes. You know, it's the same amount of power because you get, you know, two one ones or one two two, but it's separated. It's, it's separated. Uh, you know, having that is much better for removal. Uh, it's just a better card. Uh, so then we have the cycle of five staffs. Nope. All of which are unplayable. So we just you know, black staff, red staff, blue staff, white staff, green staff. And they just uh, they give you life whenever you play a spell of that color. Yeah, it's it's the whole like uh, you know ivory tower, not ivory tower. Uh, the like uh, throne of bone and uh, red star, dragon's claw, dragon's claw, like all yep. those cycles we had before. This the only difference with these ones is it trigger does trigger off the basic land type of that color. Oh yeah, that's right. You can also play a plains or a forest. You also can life. Right, so it's green spell or forest. You know, white spell or plains. Oh, uh, it's cool, but <laughs> extremely boring and like not going to do anything. Yeah. Um, Strionic Resonator is definitely, I said this in my article, like, one of the cards to watch. Um, yeah, everyone's, like, really excited about this card. It's, it's like, like, super cool, super interesting. Super cool, super interesting, super unique. Um, and it's, like, very nicely costed. Like, two mana is not a lot to invest. Two mana to use this ability. We're very used to that. With Lexicron Scepter paying two to, do you know, duplicate something. Like, that's very reasonable. 
and like triggered abilities are generally good. Yeah, it, it feels like they're trying to teach like new players about triggered abilities or like about more unique things. Yeah. Um and uh, yeah, I mean, I love the artwork. It looks cool. It's a giant friggin' tuning fork. Yeah, like the arms. Cool. Like the, si- the size of like an island. Like it's awesome. And like it's like really pretty. Like there's lots of colors going on. Yeah. There's like shock waves coming out. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's definitely a card to watch. Definitely a cool card to build around. Um, you know, like you could really do some broken things with this. I'm not sure what yet, uh, but I will. I'll definitely try. Um, oh yeah. You, you guys can see this in play in modern pretty easily. Uh, there's plenty of like sick things to do there. Um, but you know, even duplicating some Thrag Tusk triggers is not bad. Not at all. You know, duplicating maybe some uh, Shadowborn Demon triggers, killing two guys. Whoa. Know, pretty sick. Getting deep. Uh, you know, copying Restoration Agent triggers. Like You could copy the uh, Sacrifice Creature on your Shadowborn Demon trigger if you really wanted to. Is that a triggered ability? Yeah. Why wouldn't it be? Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, it looks like, I think it's a, the Shadowborn, oh, Shadowborn Demon or Shadowborn Demon. Um, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. I talk about the second one. It's just being just being a jerk. Oh, the the, the you, keep your you psychic have to kill guy. A guy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. copy that. I'll do that if I'm gonna lose. I'll just be like, I'm gonna kill my guys. Yep. All right, we got a card that James was uh, near dear to his heart. Uh, I love playing trading posts and when like it first came out because there's so many like awesome artifacts to play with it, but now there isn't, so the card's kind of like meh. Yeah. Uh, it does see weird plays. It was for a little while seeing like weird tower play. It's just like the discarded card to gain for a life engine. To like buy some time, um, against Dagger Ducks, but I don't think that trend's gonna stick around. Uh, no, the card's super dirtily, and I always kind of hated it. Uh, it doesn't look that fun. <laughs> Next up, we have Vital Poison, which I think is fine. Like, it's a, it's a combat trick, it is a combat trick, it's, it's very cheap, you know, one to one to cast, one to use. Um, it would become flavorful. really good if, like, you know, you. Could come combo with trading post and like get it back to keep doing it. Yes. Um, but like that just doesn't work really in this format to do that. Um, I mean, it's possible. Like you could actually put that combination together. Yeah. Very um, flavorful. Yeah, it's just cool. You know, poison somebody. Yep. And then we'll go to the lands, of which there are only a couple. Starting with encroaching wastes. Yep. Uh, strictly worse tectonic edge. Uh, simply because you have to play four mana. Um, I mean, it, it's kind of like reaching the same boat because, like, the, you can only edge them when they've got four lands, and you probably only have four lands at this point. Yep. But now you're like spending all your mana to sac and to and sacrifice to destroy non basic, or his tech edges only one mana. Yeah. Um, obviously, both are completely inferior to something like Wasteland. Like, yeah, even Ghost Quarter is better than this. Ghost Quarter is much better than this right now. Um, like, we're good. By the time this is going to be like this. Uh, Theros comes out, uh, where we might want something like Encroaching Waste to destroy it on basic, that would have to assume there's going to be a new cycle of like ability lands. Uh, of which in case, I might be like willing to play one or two to like destroy something like of power equal to Township, but we're not even sure if those, that, that's going to exist. So yeah. it's really hard to like justify it at the moment. Like It's impossible to justify it at the moment, but like in the future, we, we just have to see how Theros comes out to see, to determine if we can actually want to play it or not. Right. Uh, then we have uh, Mutavault as the other big like flagship reprint. Yeah, uh, this is awesome. Mutavault is very good you. card. Uh, if you never got to play with it, the card is absolutely sick. Um, you know, the, the the cheapest man land ever printed. You know, to use. Um, Mishes Factory. That's one as well, right? So tied tied with Mishes Factory. Yeah, you're right. Um, which also is you know crazy bonkers. Yes, also um, very good. Mutavolt does have upside if you do have any kind of lords, because it is a changeling. Um, which means it's a sliver. It's a sliver, you know, uh, a human, you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, the downside right now is, like, it's kind of a weird time to give us Mutavolt because we're playing all these, like, three-color decks, which have, like, really insane mana requirements. And, and Mutavolt is much more of a card that is in, uh, like, a monocolored or two-color deck, because it is colorless. Like, you're, you're in... Usually you're not going to play Mutavolt as like one of, you know, it's not like a township yes. where you're just going to like have, you wanna, you wanna have play a lot. township and, you know, sometimes... You want to play lots of Mutavolts because you want your Mutavolts. Right. You're playing like four, you know. Um, I, mean, I, 
could see, you know, two or three, and sometimes, but you know, most of the time you want your Munibolt because it's just, they're just awesome against control. Like it gives creature decks that like extra reach where like if they normally would have ran out of gas because they got wrath. This is like I'm still hitting you for two. I'm still hitting you for two. Yeah, I, I would like I even like this as a control finisher where you just, you just like your decks like almost monitor removal and here's your win condition just like yeah, to you, to you, to you, to well, you. That 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 is a deck right now in modern the uh, blue or red control deck with uh, colonnades as like the main win condition. But yeah, it's mainly just colonnades. Like I kill you with the colonnades. Right. But I mean, I have to like I have to try to justify not playing like a key rune, you know? Because if we're talking about like Esper or like something with blue and black, like Demir key rune is fantastic. It's just like a walk up the tutu. Yep. So yeah, Mutavault is a very very good card. Uh, we'll see. Def- definitely will see play. And I think as like, depending on what Theros brings us, if he like simplifies and streamlines decks, that will be beneficial. Uh, if there's a tribal thing, that would be beneficial. Yeah, I was going to ask you if you if you feel like this points to a tribal theme in Theros. It, it could be like we're seeing like the zombie minotaurs possibly as a giveaway. You know, like. Zombies, minotaurs, you know, something like that. Hopefully not zombies. I'm getting kind of sick of zombies. We've, we've had zombies pretty strong since Sinistrad. Um, yeah. So, we'll, we'll see. Uh, you know, Mutavolt's sick. Uh, it'll, it'll be an expensive card again. It has dropped off considerably money-wise since they announced the reprint. Like half? Yeah. Um, you know, this is a really expensive, like, almost, you know, $35, $40 card. And it's dropped down to, like, under 20 now, which is, which is nice. Because, you know, the reprint's going to be available. I can't wait to bust up my set of Chinese. And, uh, you have a full set of Chinese? I have a full set of Chinese. Oh, I'm pimping. Yeah. Um, I actually have to get mine because I sold mine. And they ah. it out of standard. Was this before or after you sold your Tarbon Uh, yeah, this is after. Yeah, they were yeah. after. I'm just making you feel after worse. Place. Well, mine. I have six goys now, so shut up. Yeah, I stole the other one. Yeah, yeah, good for you. And that's a look at you, just super lucky. Yeah. So, last card of the set, uh, you know, not necessarily like blown in every way, but excellent mana fixing for uh, limited format. I <laughs> uh, actually just noticed that they made this uncommon. Oh, wow. They see, you're which right. is really, like, awful. <laughs> That's really unfortunate for the people that want to splash so, colors. Like, now it's not even mana fixing. <laughs> it's mana fixing, just harder to get. It's really hard to get mana fixing. So mainly what they're saying is if you want to mana fix, you have to be in green because you have, like, the land search, the sliver, Verdant Haven, like yeah, which is like green's like one of green's traits. Yeah, yeah. Good at mana fixing. yeah. So like colorless mana fixing, you have Grotto and the uh, indestructible uh, mana rock. Yep. Dark steel ignite. Yep. Which I believe was also on common. Uh, probably. Um, but that wraps up our set review of M fourteen. Uh, yep. Yeah. Also. Um, you know, let us know what you think. Let us know if you agree with us or disagree with us. Yeah, I mean, we're open for discussion. Keep it constructive, please, obviously. Um, you know, let's talk about some new cards. There are some deck ideas. That's about it. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks.